good evening everyone i am uh, dr bafi i am working in a government hospital in shillong meghalaya the topic of my presentation today is on endotracheal tube position and fixation uh, we all know what is an endotracheal tube but just to recapitulate an endotracheal tube is a thin tube that is inserted through the glottis between the vocal cords and advanced into the trachea Endotracheal intubation typically requires the use of a lighted instrument laryngoscope to visualize the larynx and guide the insertion of the tube between the vocal cords. Uh, so these are the pictures of the endotracheal tube. The size is 2.5, 3 and 3.5 mm basically denotes the internal diameter of the endotracheal tube. Next slide. Man. So this is the vocal cord guide. This is just a rough approximation as to the insertion of the depth of the endotracheal tube. And it should the tube should be inserted in such a way that the vocal cord lies between the two lines, that is the black line and the two white lines. So how do we select the size of an endotracheal tube? We select it based on the uh, weight of the baby and the gestational age. So uh, below one kg, that is it roughly corresponds to about less than 30, uh, 28 weeks, we take about 2.5 mm size. One to two kg, 28 to 34 weeks, 3 mm. And more than two kgs, that is more than 34 weeks, 3.5 mm uh, ET tube. So how deeply should the tube be inserted in the trachea? The goal is to insert the endotracheal tube in the middle portion of the trachea. This generally requires inserting the tube so that the tip is only one to two centimeters below the vocal cords. It is important not to insert the tube too far so that the tip touches the carina or enters the main bronchus. So these are some of the methods uh, by which we can measure the length of the ET tube. One of them is the nasal trigger's length. So the nasal trigger's length is a method that has been validated in both uh, full-term and preterm newborns. The NTL method uses a calculation based on the distance from the baby's nasal septum to the triggers of the ear. So we use a measuring tape to measure the NTL and the estimated insertion depth we add plus one centimeter to it gives us the rough approximation as to how much the ET tube needs to be inserted. So this is a pictorial diagram which shows how to measure the nasal trigger's length. Whatever we get from here, we have to add one centimeter to it. Next, ma'am. So another way by which we can uh, estimate is by using the gestational age and the weight of the baby. So weight would be more uh, reliable indicator to use rather than the gestational age. So depending on the weight of the baby, if it is uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 kgs, we use 5.5 centimeter, we can insert. 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 kg, 6 centimeters. 0 0.9 to 1 kg, 6.5 centimeters. 1.1 to 1.4 kg, 7 centimeters. 1.5 to 1.8 kg, 7.5 centimeters. 1.9 to 2.4 kg, 8 centimeters. 2.5 to 3.1 kg, 8.5. And 3.2 to 4.2 kg, around 9 centimeters. Another way is the tokens formula. This is basically the lip to tip uh, formula uh, where we add the weight of the baby plus 6. So if the baby's weight is 3 kgs, the length of insertion will be 9 centimeters. Now we come to securing the endotracheal tube. Uh, we have to use the right index finger to hold the tube securely against the baby's heart palate. Thanks, ma'am. And then cut a piece of uh, three by four half inch tape so that it's long enough to extend from one side of the baby's mouth across the upper lip and about two centimeter onto the opposite cheek. Place the uncut section of the tape on the baby's cheek so that the beginning of the split is close to the corner of the baby's mouth. Then place the upper leg of the tape across the baby's upper lip. Carefully lap the lower leg around the tube. Be sure that the desired centimeter marking remains next to the baby's upper lip. Uh, this is an ET tube fixation device, uh, which uh, is available, an ET tube holder. It is skin-friendly newborn hydrocolite tabs. Micro and jumbo sizes available with medical grade acrylic device. Designed to reduce uh, extubation, help prevent palate trauma and allow for better oral care. Eliminates need for tape near the mouth or nose and color coded sizes are available. Uh, so th these are the examples of the ET tube fixation device. So the color coding is present and depending on that, we can use it. So how do we uh, check for the size? Next slide, ma'am. So the size of the uh, Neobar, we can uh, check by using the strip which is available along with it. It comes along with this strip which is color coded. So next slide, ma'am. So after the patient is intubated, we select the proper size Neobar by using Neobar measuring tape strip which is provided, place the midline of the strip at the nasal septum and wrap to the ear. And color that falls over the opening of the ear canal corresponds to the correct neobar size. To ensure proper fit, position the neobar across the center of the mouth between the upper and the lower lips and neobar should not contact the lips. Uh, we have to prep the skin before we apply the neobar. We have to clean and dry the skin. Alcohol should not be used as it is an irritant and it may uh, interfere with the application of the hydrocolloid taps. So the hydrocolloid taps is the, the taps which are sticking onto the baby's face. 
So these has to be pre-warmed before we use them. So we have we can hold them in our hands for about 60 seconds or under the radiant warmer for about 50 seconds. After that, we can apply it on the baby's face. Next slide. Ma so this is the way we uh, use the Neobar. Uh, a, a small around half inch plaster has to be uh, encircled around the Neobar and along with it, the, the endotracheal tube has to be attached along with it. So this Neo one Neobar can be used for about five days and we can remove it either by cutting it or by removal of the hydrocolloid taps. So coming to how to confirm the tube position. Next slide, ma'am. So confirming the tube position, the one which we use clinically is we use a stethoscope to listen for the breath sounds in both the axilla and over the stomach. If the tube is correctly positioned, the breath sounds should be equal on both sides. Symmetrical chest movement with each breath. Little or no air leak from the mouth during positive pressure ventilation and decrease or absent air entry over the stomach. The next is by using colorimetric devices. Uh, these devices, uh, they uh, change color in the presence of CO2. So the colorimetric device comes in purple color and in the presence of CO2, it changes to yellow color. However, there are some problems with the colorimetric CO2 detectors. Uh, they can be uh, false negative even if the tube is in the trachea also. This happens in the case of inadequate ventilating pressure. If there is collapsed lungs, bilateral pneumothorax, a uh, very low heart rate, low cardiac output, or an obstructed endotracheal tube. And this is basically because no gas exchange occurs. If there is low cardiac output, less circulation will be present to the lungs, so less cardiac uh, carbon dioxide will be produced. As a result, false negative uh, result will come. Then false, uh, false positive uh, can be in the presence if there is a contamination with epinephrine or surfactant or atropine, or in the case of a defective device. Next slide. So... Main way by which we can confirm the ET tube position is by uh, doing an X-ray. So the tip of the tube should appear in the mid trachea adjacent to the first or the second thoracic vertebrae and avoid using the clavicles as a landmark because their location varies depending upon the baby's position and the angle at, what the, at which the X-ray was taken. So if the tube is advanced too far, it may touch the carina or enter the right main bronchus causing collapse of the right upper loop or the left lung and also a pneumothorax in the right lung. So you can even use an ultrasound to perform, but ultrasound requires a trained personnel and ET tube tip must lie somewhere between 0 0.5 to 1 centimeter from the upper border of the arch of the aorta. Advantages of ultrasonography over X-ray include absence of radiation, less handling, particularly in critical ill patients, potential to determine the ET tube position in the delivery room, particularly for early surfactant delivery and early identification detection of complications from malposition. However, uh, ultrasound has disadvantages because, next slide, ma'am. It requires the use of uh, specialized skills and trained personnel, difficulties to correctly identify anatomical landmarks, and lack of widespread availability. So, some tips to reduce self, uh, self extubation. Units are more prone to unplanned extubation because of prolonged intubation, shorter trachea, uncuffed tube, and probably because of uh, less sedation. So, some tips to reduce accidental extubation are using of a proper fixation device proper documentation at the time of insertion and while fixing, diligent use of ETT cards at the bedside, starting the depth of ETT at the lip, depth to suction to date when taped. Two staffs should be present at all times for any procedure or position change. Adequate suctioning is essential to prevent excessive secretions which can loosen the device or plug the ETT and proper size tube to reduce the risk of self-extubation. So some take-home messages, the recommended endotracheal tube size for various weight and gestational age categories should be used. Using a tube that is too small increases the resistance to airflow and the chance that it will become obstructed by secretions. And using a tube that is too large may traumatize the airway. Accurate positioning of the tube is important for ventilation and for surfactant delivery. And if inserted too shallow, it can be displaced easily. And if the tube is inserted too far, it will enter the right main stem bonkers, causing complications like pneumothorax, desaturation, and collapse of the lungs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jyoti, please continue sharing. Can you go back to the slide about accidental extubation? Very good presentation, Dr. Buffy. You spoke very clearly and uh, the information is very clear as well. Well done. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I mean, sir. one of the key areas, I mean, the reason we focus on ET tube position and fixation, she told about the position already, uh, that we need to make sure that uh, it's not too deep or it's not too high as well. So in a very small baby, I don't know how many of you manage extreme preterms, but in a very small baby, even 0 0.2, 0 0.3 centimeters can make a difference. And the neck flexion moves the tube deeper in and the neck extension brings the tube higher up. 
Again, if you're using traction for the tube uh, uh, tube holders, uh, you should be careful that uh, there is no accidental extubation. So always train your staff to uh, educate the ET tube. If you're using an incubator, there are a rear end uh, near the head end of the baby. You can bring the tubes rather than from the side windows. So the chances of uh, tug is less. Suppose you're opening the door of the incubator or something. So that's important. There is one component of extubation self-extubation where the outside fixation stays the same, but the tube has actually dislodged inside the throat. So it's not in the larynx, it's come out of it. So that can happen because uh, in many of these fixating devices, fixing devices, the, there is a small gap between the fulcrum of the device and the tongue of the baby. So the baby can push the tongue and if there is a neck movement associated, they can self-extubate. So uh, sometimes we need to, where it is, uh, where the baby is active, you may need to put a tape below that uh, tube fixing device. There is a, another device called Neofit, but due to cost implications, maybe most of you are using the tape. But again, in a small baby, having uh, a sticky tape on the face can risk skin damage when you remove it. So consider getting devices which are suitable for your unit and obviously uh, have a quality improvement program. If any of you have self-extubation in the unit, you need to educate the team on what are the various reasons why self-extubation happens. If you're handling the ventilated baby during cares, you may need another nurse coming to help. So we discussed the importance of having adequate staffing on the unit. So that's an important factor as well. And uh, in UK and UAE, for example, if there are incidents, we file an incident report. I think the bigger centers in India would be doing the same as well. In the smaller hospitals, if you are not doing it, have some factor that helps you monitor these. Quality improvement involves monitoring these changes. So always uh, look at that as well. Uh, okay, we can close the presentation now. Let's uh, have a discussion on the topic. Uh, any questions for Dr. Buffy or any comments? Dr. Sai Priya, do you want to say anything? Mm, no, sir, it's clear actually. Yeah, but you have any comments? You want to mention anything more? Anything from your experience? Maybe some anecdotes? Mm, nothing, so, nothing much. Nothing specific. Dr. Saruna Raja? Good evening, sir. Ah, good evening. Any comments from your side or any tips any for others? Sir, uh, she almost covered uh, each and every steps in uh, endothelial uh, fixation. Sir. Yes. So we already discussed in the PCS that you don't have the calorimeter in many parts of India. It's a useful tool, so try to get it as well. Uh, especially even if the baby is in the unit, uh, if the tube gets dislodged or you have uh, troubleshooting for dope, it's quite a useful uh, component. So try to get it as well. Dr. Gaurav, uh, you want to say something? Um, no, sir. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Please go ahead. You can uh, uh, say your comments. No, so the, the most problem what we face with displacement is with the bigger babies. In preterms, uh -huh, we don't yeah. generally, yeah, who are very active. And so the type of tape used also makes a difference in yes. extubation because the so cloth ones generally get wet and they kind of. That's the reason uh, Western countries and developed world, we use the uh, tube fixators okay. because the chance of uh, peeling off, uh, I mean, because the the new bar, the advantage is it, there's tape goes far away from the mouth. I mean, if you have tape next to the mouth with all the secretions, there's okay. a high chance of lifting off. And one, once it lifts at some aspect of it, it can peel. So okay. that's a difference. I mean, the new bar, the tape goes to the side and the new fit also, you have like a mustache, which fits. So uh, I don't know, I mean, how expensive it will be in the Indian scenario, but... You can consider those at least for the babies who are more difficult to manage and use of mittens and also uh, developmental friendly care, uh, like wrapping the baby to keep them comfortable, uh, yes. feeding them. I mean, uh, tube feeding is fine in a baby on uh, non-invasive or invasive ventilation in most of the situations unless they are in shock. And many times we progress to full feeds by 24 hours once they are stable. So you don't, uh, because that also plays a role in calming down the baby. And as we yeah. discussed, uh, I also shared my brief video on sedation. So we don't prefer to sedate the babies as far as we can. Mm. So try developmentally friendly practices to secure the baby. I mean, I know babies can be agitated, but uh, try to use non-medical means to calm them down. So Dr. Palnivel, uh, any comments? Anything you want to share from your experience, maybe anecdotes? 
you, you are in a busy unit, so you would see accidental extubations, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so no. any feedback? Do you do ultrasound for the tube position yourself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, it, it is a very difficult fire one, sir. Ah, so you don't recommend that, no? The yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, because uh, we have to pull the ET tube uh, to diagnose uh, uh, <laughs> diagnose <laughs> in IUSG, sir. So you have to be prepared to reintubate. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that it is a very difficult one, sir. And all of you are familiar with the pulmonary uh, waveforms, isn't it? To look at the tube position. Uh, self extubation can be diagnosed using a pulmonary waveform. So if you go to the bedside and you see like it stops short, all the waves, uh, there is inspiration but no expiration. So that will tell you that uh, the tube is not in place. And of course, you will see the flow pattern as well. So the 